Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Media True Dirt, and welcome back to Starfield, where last time, we successfully infiltrated uh, the Crimson Fleet. That's the good news. The bad news is, uh, to do it, I did have to kill someone. And that could be a problem. Don't forget, after all, we are infiltrating the Crimson Fleet on behalf of the UC, who told me, hey, you've got to not break too many laws, and... Uh, Okay, I'm not desperately familiar with, like, you know, the entire legal code of the UC, but I suspect that murder is a crime, yes. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say sorry to the commander right now, and then we're gonna find the dead person's family, and I'm gonna send them a gift basket, okay? A nice one, with, like, really nice chocolates and fruit and stuff. We received word you boarded the Ragana. I don't care if Rake was with the fleet. The pilot and his crew were not. What you did was uncalled for. No, 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 no. The pilot and the crew are fine, okay? The majority of the crew are alive. One casualty, and it was Rake, and uh, it sounds like we all agree he was ex-Crimson Fleet, so uh, you should not mind this, okay? I think I did a pretty damn good job. I don't care how many you saved. I care that there was a casualty. We don't handle things around here by using murder as a tool. You've been hired to act like one of the fleet, but you can't get lost in the part. We still have rules that need to be followed. Understood? No, not in the slightest. If you want me to genuinely infiltrate the fleet and have them, you know, not realize I'm a UC plant, I'm going to need to kill a few people because I'm literally pretending to be a murderous pirate in a faction that fires without provocation on every ship they come across. Now I want to make this crystal clear. You do what you can to stay in the fleet, but there is an ethical line we cannot cross. Do something like this again and you're out. Permanently. Okay, so on this occasion, yeah, they've let me off with a warning, though I did get one other useful thing out of that meeting. Here we go, a couple of, yes, profiles the UC's been keeping. So, Adler Kemp, that's the guy we ran into over on Mars. So, uh, Crimson Fleet ship captain operating out of Sidonia. Hot-headed, yes, he certainly seemed like, you know, he was uh, very keen for murder to occur. Despite that, seasoned ship captain, and in most cases, uh, competent. Right. And more importantly, okay, Delgado. We've not met him yet, but by the sounds of it, he is, yes, a very senior individual in the Crimson Fleet. So, uh, Aquila City originally fell into crime at a young age, despite being born into wealth. His parents exiled him in the hope of correcting the behaviour, yet this only served to increase his criminal behaviour, culminating in the theft of a cargo ship, which he used to initiate himself into the Crimson Fleet. So, uh, right. Plenty of Crimson Fleet people these days are, are not part of the original breakout from the prison planet. These days, you know, they're a big enough faction, they can just recruit from people buying their way in. Gotcha. Which, in all fairness, is pretty much what I just did. So, okay, just put a bit of power into the grav drive here. No need for too much in the missiles. Uh, let's see what we flippy got right here at the key, because... Uh, okay, I mean... Presumably, there's going to be a whole bunch of illegal yes. black market shops and whatnot dotted about. So, okay. It's a very bloody large space station. Got it. Though, okay. Presumably, you guys wouldn't have... John, the key. This is going to have been like, you know, the space station that was the gateway to the prison planet that they broke out of back in the day. That's why it's going to be called the key. And speaking of which, yes, I may be spot on here because uh, down on the planet there is uh, the lock. So I'm guessing, yes, only way to access the lock is going via key station. They took the station over at the same time as they took over the planet. Gotcha. Right, they've got turrets, they've got a fleet in circulation. Don't worry about any of that. Instead, uh, right... The key. Let's get permission to dock. Nobody hails the key. Just do your business. Okay, I'm very sorry. I didn't realise I wasn't supposed to be hailing. Right, Pyrus just like, you know, dock without asking. Gotcha, that does make sense, yes. The hell took you so long? 
Forget how to grab jump or something? Okay, I'm sorry about the delay. I was busy doing criminal things and not checking in with the UC. I don't care. Time is money and you've wasted both. That ends today. Clear? But all that aside, you made it. So now you get to hear a nifty history lesson. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. All right, history time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, lock, key, Q, huh? We've got everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are key. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction. You know, that thing I spend most of my day dealing with. Believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, Neva. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Aludra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Rook. Well, you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just whining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Cricks had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuroamps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. Don't On even try right, to rip me off. Got Bradley from I'm the trade value authority. when I see it. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Bog serves watered down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Core, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Ray? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. 
the money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Okay, so... Right. You've got a bomb in your chest. I would love to know more about how the hell that happens. I see the bomb as a symbol of my importance, and it's a constant reminder to everyone of the sacrifice I was willing to make. The freedom I've given up, the pain, it's not something that just anyone has the resolve to bear. He is right. The pain he endures is proof of his loyalty and his resolve. Glad you approve. Obviously, betrayal isn't taken lightly around here. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. And yes, like we were reading just a second ago, it does sound like Delgado is a bit of a smart cookie. It's why he's the boss. Of course, I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my ribcage, but Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Ryujin would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There, you're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. Alright, so that's me in the system, but... I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I was kinda hoping this would be like, you know, a, a super awesome future sci-fi tattoo chair, so I could get the official Crimson Fleet tattoo or something, but... You know what? I might get myself a tattoo today. That feels appropriate, damn it. So okay, when we're ready, we can nip up to the next level and meet Delgado. But, 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 before we get to that, one, looks like, yes, we've got ourselves a brand new set of uh, mission boards here. So, uh, right, unlike mission boards in the systems I've been in so far, that have been like, you know, uh, take this person to this location, carry this cargo, uh, instead, uh, right, stealing and piracy. So yeah, go up to a mule, attempt to do a Surma stealing of that, and... Uh, I mean, if I had to guess, the reward is probably greater than the bounty it would generate, even if I do get caught. So, uh, right, it's relatively easy money, though honestly I've got money coming out of my ears. So we don't need to worry about that just yet. I'm more interested in a hangabout, just a mosey in uh, this direction for a second. Uh, Yes, hang on, where's the special sounding shop? You, Zuri, Neuroamps. Now you, Zuri, sound interesting. Okay, a handful of, yeah, unique weapons, nothing too exciting to my mind, though a couple of Varun weapons you don't see around too often, so, right, possibly Crimson Fleet and Varun trade with each other, not sure if that's what we're supposed to be reading from this. And there we go, just as I was saying before, she sells Neuroamps up to Intimidation 15%. Though, uh, yes, I can't intimidate, unfortunately. You need to actually take the relevant social skill uh, to do that. So, uh, yes, doesn't really help me out, though. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of tempted just to buy the cheap one anyway. Just because uh, I kind of like having one of them attached to my face. It seems kind of cool. So, uh, you know what? Sure, I'm having a cheap Neuroamp installed on my head. 
So, uh, right, just around the corner from Azuri, the armor store, you're selling pirate gear. So, okay, bonus 5% crit damage. That's actually pretty bloody good. Oh, I can't deny, I do rather like your grungy bar at the back of the area, by the way. That's pretty nice, and... Uh, Yes, this would do. This woman, with like, you know, her teardrop tattoos. Those are pretty good. If I could find someone who could like, you know, do that for me, that'd be great, actually. Ooh, and better and better elsewhere in, you know, the exact same bar, we've got ourselves a grunt number four. So, right, ballistic weapons, another 5% crit damage on top of the suit I just put on, and uh, you know what? That does make me think. I've got myself a skill point right here, so... Uh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna take myself marksmanship. So, uh, critical hit chance with non-automatic ranged weapons uh, up 3%. You know what? I'm taking that. Let's go. And all we need to do to, yes, move that in the right direction is deal 10 arranged crits. So, uh, Keep an eye out on, you know, how fast that fills up. Because I suspect my shotguns are getting a lot of crits these days. Okay, we've also got, yes, Jim with a gun range selection of beds down in the bunks. But screw it. Let's get over to Delgado and see, yes, precisely what it is uh, he wants us to do. Because uh, first mission was just, you know, uh, getting into the fleet. We don't really know what they're actually going to want us to do now we're here. So, uh, right. Mr. Delgado and, uh, oh, I love your command center. Like, you know, uh, ominous lighting, bit of red, but not too much, giant skull up on the wall. Uh, oh, now this is just lovely. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal, or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. And we know precisely what happens to people who decide they don't want to live like that, because, uh, yes, the person we just killed, that was a previous rook who wanted out. Gotcha. Because... Okay, I'm going to make a dumb crack about how much I enjoy breakfast to see whether, you know, Delgado's got a sense of humor or not. Hey, if you've got a problem, I can decorate that wall behind you with your brains. Room could use a little color if you ask me. It's all right, neighbor. I admire this rook's backbone. Takes a lot of guts to crack jokes with the threat of death staring them in the face. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead rooks. You'd think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story. Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Okay, are we actually talking like, you know, about buried pirate treasure, but in space? Because if so, I am 100% on board, though. Uh, right, before we get to that, yes, Codes. You've just mentioned codes there. Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for, well, since Griggs left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues, but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. Okay, so you busted out of the prison, Basically, yes, we're able to take over the station, but a prison being a prison, 
it's pretty well secure. There might have been buildings, or rooms, or vaults, armories, etc, etc. You were never able to crack open until today. But, okay, please, tell me this is about buried pirate treasure. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's Legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sysdef. Okay, so potentially yes, like... Maybe Crix's legacy isn't a chest full of money. It could be a super-powered ship, but then again... If it's like, you know, over a hundred years old, uh, we know from, say, the Mantis ship, that ships that old have since become redundant, so... Uh, okay, we don't know what it's gonna be yet, we'll figure that out as we go. The next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. Okay, now I know the Pirate King did just specifically say, don't keep me waiting, we need to like, you know, get down to the surface now, and I will be down there in just a second. But as I was saying, there is something I do need to do first. Here we go, back to, you know, a proper civilized system where they've got an inner hands, etc, etc, because I feel like I need a makeover. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I was coming here to, like, you know, get a really badass pirate tattoo. But there's some really cute cat ones as well. Like, you know, cat paws, just from your eye down to your neck, that's adorable. Then there's a space cat, that's cute too. Okay, you know what, I don't hate this. It's a good kind of, you know, blend of a pirate, but still somewhat elegant. Okay, that done, now we can go down to the lock. So, okay, as we already knew, uh, the planet is a uh, bloody cold. How cold are we talking? Minus 53. Okay, pretty bloody cold, standard gravity, so right. Moving around with my jump packs, not gonna be the easiest thing in the world. Gotcha. Oh, we'll say that. Right, we've got guys just sitting out here with, you know, no helmets on. And, oh, Andreja, I'd forgotten you were dressed as the Mantis. That's marvellous, so... Uh, Right, guys, what do you need doing? And are you really not cold? Because uh, I feel like you'd be cold without, like, you know, a, a hat on or something. About time you got here. I told you you were wasting your time, Del. Okay, once again, I'm sorry I'm late. I needed to get this new awesome tattoo done. All right, listen up, because I am only going to go through this once. We are here to dig up any info about Grix's legacy. We are not here to scrap for loot. Whatever you pick up, don't think, don't get creative, bring it straight to me. Okay, so by the sounds of it, you don't just get to keep what you find. Officially, the rules are, it comes back to the fleet. Gotcha. And you know what? Mathis doesn't seem like the smartest tool in the shed, so I'm just going to start antagonizing him, see if I can bait him into attacking me. That way, it won't be my fault when I murder him. If that was supposed to be a joke, I am not laughing. Don't worry about laughing, Delgado. It'll be a goddamn laugh riot when I split open his head with a crowbar. All right, that's enough. If either of you want to fly with the Crimson Fleet, then you need to follow one simple rule. When you're on a job, you do exactly what I say. No questions asked. If that doesn't work for you, just say so, and I will leave you on this ice ball without a ship. You will be dead within hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically, when we're on the job, he wants us to be professional and serious, though he's okay with the occasional joke when we chill up on the station. Gotcha. In which case, 
Understood, Captain. Point me in the right direction. Your little friend can tag along until we get to the outer doors of the prison. But I will be damned if I'm letting them inside. <sighs> fine, fine. Go on. Leave me. Just be sure and thaw me out when you return. We have a lot of ground to cover between the landing area and the lock, so let's get moving. Okay, so officially I've got to leave the Mantis outside. The Mantis isn't allowed into the prison, this is. Well, this is just lovely. Right, shotgun out. I've got some new crits to test out, damn it. Right, and just down the road, here we flipping go. The lock. So, right, formerly a prison. Not in good shape anymore. In we go. Just make sure we keep Delgado alive in the event of, you know, local wildlife, etc, etc. And by the looks of it, yes, there's the odd little thing a daughter drowned here. Nothing, I say nothing too scary. There's a fair whack round here. Oh, and better and better. These guys are sticky. Right, I do enjoy a sticky bug. Sticky bugs are very useful. Anyway, Delgado, what have you got for me? Here we are. The place where Jasper Griggs laid the groundwork for finding the legacy and eventually the Crimson Fleet. The lock. Okay. So by the sounds of it, yes, you view this place with a fair bit of, you know, almost religious reverence in a way. Jess, Crix himself, presumably he was a prisoner here. Around five years. Rumor says he started planning his escape the moment that he arrived. Alright, so we still don't know much about the guy yet, but maybe we'll find more inside. This must be where they registered the prisoners before transferring them to a cell block. Could you imagine being stuck under a ton of ice like this for the rest of your life? Yeah, sure. Must have been awful. Better them than us, though, am I right? Wait, shut up a second! Did you hear that? Got ourselves. Oh, we've got a big old pile of those guys. Right, just start taking you out. These are bloody fast, actually. Really bloody fast, as it turns out. Okay, bare minimum. We can just about one shot them, even at level 25. Uh, when they're hiding underground, uh, we can see. All right, just a handful to prove we're ready to go. There's ballistics up to 50 out of 50. We're being a little bit swarmed here. If need be, John, don't forget, fly. You can always uh, cocking fly. Lovely. Just take you out. And yeah, as long as they're beneath me, you uh, can do a little bit of damage uh, with my boosters. For level 35s, it's not going to do much. Take out the adolescence. Right, we're going to get a lot of glue out of this place. I love it. And from the looks of the compass, right, there's a lot more down here before we're done. Now let's see. Looks like we are inside some sort of prisoner transfer area, but everything is locked down tight. Since you are such good friends, why don't you and Mathis head up to that control room and see if you can get some more of these doors open? Alright, if we're talking security skills, that's potentially I can do. Yes, though. Alright. Be ready. There's probably more trouble dotted about yet. Oh, and speaking of which, hello, Sexy. Oh, yeah, that's actually a pretty big step up from my existing armor, and uh, I always kind of hated the way this looked. So, oh, go on. Proper bounty hunter space gear, sure. Oh, and that's delightful. Right, he was saying no one had been in here since the breakout, so we've literally got old frozen corpses here. So, uh, I mean, bare minimum... They've still got money on them, that's nice. And on top of that, right, workstations too. We may or may not be able to, you know, piece together the final days of this prison from this. And I'll give ya, Jasper Crix deserves, you know, credit for escaping. This place was properly hardcore, so DNA scanning, leg restraints, arm restraints, etc, etc. Okay. Potentially, yes, getting in and out was rather on the difficult side. Which meant they were pretty good at catching incoming contraband, though... Uh, okay, that's what they did get. Obviously, we don't know how much they didn't. Keep on keeping on. Let's have a motion over to, uh, yes, the control room. So we've got to keep your eyes open for buried monstrosities and... Coming down. Damn it. Okay, we're gonna have to, like, you know, go back the long way. 
gotcha. For the time being, we've still got a mission, Mathis. Just chill out, though. I mean, now there's no witnesses. Literally nobody would know. Well, this is just great. The hell are we supposed to do now? Okay, Mathis, chill. Because there's definitely something bad in here. I just saw my caution meter edging towards, you know, nastiness. Stick to the plan, chill, don't murder each other. Yet. The plan? Who gives a shit about the plan? Let's face it, we're on our own now. Okay. Unless potentially... Oh, could this be part of the tests? You think he rigged that collapse on purpose? No. No way. I get that we're down here trying to prove ourselves. But I don't think this is what Delgado had in mind. Okay, maybe not. But step one, we need to get back to Delgado, all right? Just keep a cool head, Mathis. Let's not shoot each other. As I say, yet. Well, yeah, we'll get to that eventually. For right now, I have a much better idea. We use this opportunity to take out Delgado, and at the same time, make some serious credits for ourselves. Oh. Unless you're a plant. You might be a plant by Delgado to test my loyalty. No, 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 no. I should shoot you myself. For saying that, you stupid bastards. Whoa, whoa, hang on. G g give me a second to explain. Let's pretend for a second Delgado's correct. And there's information here about Crix's legacy. Once we get rid of him, we'll dig up the garbage ourselves and sell whatever we find to Neva. We'll be rolling in credits. You think Neva's gonna not mind that we offed Delgado? Or not be, you know, suspicious if he just dies down here with us as the only witnesses? Bloody hell. You are a plant sent by Delgado. I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone right now. Are you crazy? I'm no rat for Delgado. I'm busting the ass to become one of the Crimson Fleet captains just like you. And in case you missed it, that icefall trapped both of us in here. Unless we find a way out, no one's reporting anything to anyone. Ever again. No, this is a stupid idea. Crimson Fleet will be hunting us for the rest of our lives. No, 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 no way. Listen to me. We're going to be handing Neva leadership of the Crimson Fleet on a platter. She'll be thanking us for getting rid of Delgado. I mean, come on. I'll bet you a month's share that he's never been this vulnerable. It's perfect. I mean, when you put it that way, he's got more of a point. But no, 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 no. Not gonna happen. I don't trust you. You might be a plant. Oh, fine. Suit yourself. You know, for a second there, I was almost starting to respect you. Now, let's find a way out of here. Okay. Time if this does fight. turn out to be... Oh! Speaking of which, as I was just saying a second ago, there's definitely something going on here. So, right. Get out the coachman. That's good at clearing out bugs, though. John, I feel like... Uh-oh. I feel like possibly Delgado might be about to die to the bugs anyway. Not my fault, by the way. I was like, you know, over here. Not doing that, though. Okay, we'll get back to him in a second. Uh, once we've done our business over on this side, it's all going to be fine. Hello. Quit screwing around and pick up. Hello, Delgado. Look, I'm not betraying you, but I want you to know Hello. Mathis tried to make me betray you. We have obviously been cut off, so I need you to do two things. First... I want you to keep looking for a way to open the rest of the doors down here. Otherwise, I'm not going anywhere. And second, try and dig up whatever you can about Jasper Griggs. You both got that? Right. Over to a scanner mode. That will highlight, yes, anything we can interact with. So just grab the medicine. Transfer control area, if we can. Here we go. Security controls. Uh, override lockdown. That should crack open the doors. Brilliant. And a breakdown of a prisoner area. So standard prisoners are A to K and L to Z. Presumably, yeah, that'll be surname. So uh, that'll put Cricks in A block. Though admittedly, like, you know, high-risk prisoner and violent offenders. There'd be some overlap there. Like, where would you put a high-risk violent person? Okay, this prison needs better classification systems. This is a mess. And speak of the devil, uh, right. 
Jasper Crix, and there's his ID, LPN987. He'll be arriving on Shuttle 5 with a full escort to be immediately transferred to D Block after arrival. Do not attempt to search or perform standard medical exams until the prisoner's in a secure location. So, right. Even before he broke out, like long before he broke out, from the moment he arrived, he was already flagged as a big deal. Right, in which case, D Blanc is in this direction. Let's see what we flipping got. Ooh, and I think we're starting to see, yes, the origins of the Crimson Fleet. Not in the sense of Jasper Crix here, but in the sense of, uh, yes, the fact this place was just an absolute nightmare to live in. So, uh, step one, it was bloody cold. Uh, and obviously, you know, they're worried about the staff, but, you know, the prisoners are living in here too. Uh, Step two, the prisoners started, you know, using heating elements in order to chisel ice out of the walls to make improvised weapons, so the heating stuff got taken away. So, right, huge prisoner population that was extremely bloody cold and probably therefore very dissatisfied about their lot in life. Still, nothing else for now. Power gets back on, security access, and... Alright, we're getting close to... Trouble undergrounds. Looks like there's a guard tower overlooking the cell block. We should check it out. All right, and one guard tower over there. Not a bad place to start, Mathis. Good shout, I'll give ya. Still, what I am seeing is, yeah, trouble down below. We might be able to use a boost pack and my lovely, lovely abilities to finish. No. By the looks of it, before they spawn out into the world, uh, there's not much you can do to... Uh, oh, yeah, there's the crits. Right, explosives can definitely have crits. Excuse me, I see you over there. And I see you guys are uh, hiding underground, though... Uh, like I can't beat you out, unfortunately. Oh, we've got something else down over here, too. Right, a coaty light. Whatever a coaty light is, precisely. A weird floaty thing. So, uh, right, just... Keep flying, stay on, you know, the edge of uh, bits and pieces. Check out the security room if you can. That's got to be a good place to be. Oh, I see you guys. I see you guys and I don't appreciate any of this, by the way. Still, have myself to ammo, guns, etc. And... Sarah uh, Lee switch. Broken intercom. Right, we might need to do some repairs before we can get these systems operating again. Oh, and hello, Sexy. Right, in a side room over here, Crix's journal, entry number four. But it works like a skill magazine, so crew and companions do 5% more weapon damage on top of all other bonuses. That's actually pretty bloody good, in fact. So, right. As it turns out, we might want to be looking around this area very carefully indeed, because uh, by the looks of it, oh dear. Right, you got cocking shanked, didn't you, dear oh flippin' dear? Oh yeah, there's a lot more here than I was thinking. This is not just bug clearance, because uh, there's a locker here. But I need Carter's locker key to crack it open. Now, who precisely is Carter? Also, John, put this away. I'm getting nervous just holding out the explosive gun. It's only a matter of time till I blow myself up, so... Uh, right. I need someone by the name of uh, Carter. I don't know whether that's, you know, a staff or a prisoner, though. I mean, that looked like prisoner showers to me, because Crix's journal was in one of the lockers, so presumably that would be the case. Also, apparently I've already got Crix's journal entry 3, giving me, yeah, some, you know... Store price benefits. How long have I had that? Because I do not remember getting that. And despite the fact it's marked as a journal, right, I can't actually read it any further. It's just, you know, a, a weird series of plans and schematics by the Luxie of it. Okay, bare minimum, I think I've, yes, taken care of the local infestation, aside from the last handful over here. Yes, by the Luxie of it, what we've got here is a whole bunch of cells. Like, you know, uh, it's not regular. It's kind of just where they could fit them in. So, uh, right. Check every cell. Uh, there's going to be one place you might find, you know, uh, a prisoner's journal. It could be in one of the cells. Especially given a uh, right. Some of them are locked. But I've not seen anything tougher so far than just, you know, uh, 
advanced. So that I can take care of. And by any chance, buddy, would you be... No. You're a prisoner with a digipick, drugs, right. I've seen actually a fair amount of, you know, chisels, drugs, money on the prisoner corpses. Turns out this prison was, somehow or another, extraordinarily leaky. Suggesting possibly, yeah, corrupt guards. Like, given all the security we saw mentioned above, it must have been corrupt guards. And also, uh, there is just so much Dickens. Everyone in this universe just reads Dickens all the time. It's weird. Oh, and one more mystery. Right. Workroom. Master locked. Right, we need like a security key card of some description. Possibly a guard corpse, but hard to say. Ventilation, though. That might give me an alternative way in if I could just get into the vents. Here we go. Secure access. Locked, but hang about... Thought I just heard it maybe opening that door for me, but no. We need a key for the maintenance computer as well. Right, we're starting to put this together here, but we're going to be needing keys, passwords, all sorts of bits and pieces. Keep on keeping on. Let's just motion up to, uh, yeah, the guard tower that Mathis actually, you know, uh, mentioned to me. So, uh, speak to Mathis. Okay, Mathis, I thought I'd been very clear about this. I don't trust you, and I'm not following any bloody plan you suggest, okay? We're not doing it. I suppose we should start off by searching the tower for the location of Crix's cell. If he stashed any useful information, it might still be hidden somewhere inside. You know what? That's not a bad idea, and on top of that, I did see one cell, yeah, round to the right over here somewhere, that couldn't be opened by lockpicking. Only the computer could do it, so... Right. Now that, that's gonna be the one. So, okay. Prisoner records, etc, etc. Let's see what we've got. There's our boy, D03118. And on top of that, cell D02106 is potentially, you know, where there might be some more interesting, unique stuff going on. And as for switches, right, I can open sections. Now... Two was just mentioned to us. So, right, D block section two, those are now open. So, okay, step one, yes, 02106. Here we go, 02104. Already cleared you guys out, and uh, this is the right area, but even with that on, we need to find the right computer to crack you open. Hang about. There we go. Right, so that's got you open, buddy. Now just mosey back towards the cells in this direction. That should have got me the mysterious extra McJibble. Lovely. So, okay. I'm going to be honest, it's just an Assassin's Grandel, which is not that exciting. But I'm never going to turn down a prison door opening puzzle, damn it. Right, more importantly, yeah, get back out to uh, the central area. From uh, here, just to boost back up to uh, the McJibble. Get back up to the top floor, change that over to uh, Sector 3 being open, and then I'm pretty sure I know precisely where I'm going. Here we go, just hop over the gap here. So this is the correct cell, right? No, hang on. It was 18, it was down a bit, but I think I know where, yes, the thing is. There it is, right there. Crack you open, buddy, and now we're going into Crix's cell. Which doesn't look very interesting, but I'm guessing he had something hidden away. Not just ammo and cred sticks, that's bloody everywhere instead. Here we go. We've got ourselves a, a food tray. Just maybe grab that. Or possibly that was just a food tray. Okay, the food tray is not a secret plan or anything. It's just a food tray. Oh, but hello, sexy. The lamp. Okay. Try and, you know, pry open the base a bit. And, uh, right, we've got something. G'day. I bumped into someone in the mess hall yapping about a ship carrying a fortune and credits. I know it's usually bullshit, but he seemed to have details. After striking up a conversation, I found out the ship was
was a Gal Bank transport named Legacy that went down in some remote system during the war. This is exactly the score I'd been waiting to find. I need to contact Carter to let him know it's time to get off this rock. He'll help the mining detail slip into the utility closet and ventilation room. That's where we'll dig. Not up, but through. <laughs> right to the armory. Carter mentioned that security keeps rotating codes on all the terminals in the lock. So we'll have to coordinate this carefully. For now, we'll continue using his locker in the showers area as a drop point for the code to the utility closet. By this time next month, I should be out of this dump and uploading those creds into my account. Now that makes a lot of sense. So right, it's a banking vessel filled with a huge amount of cred sticks. Lovely. And on top of that, I know everything about, yes, where we need to go now. I've already explored this area pretty thoroughly. So, uh, right, now to get to uh, the showers. We saw those just a second ago. Mosey straight on down here over on the left. And uh, by any chance... Right, now I know the code. Uh, there's just some prison scrubs. That's not particularly interesting. Money, money and... Uh, Carter's gig... Evidence. Okay, Carter. Confirming that the latest code to the utility room is 48611071. The mining crew tells me it'll take them a week to cut through the ice. So I'm giving you that long to square your end of the plan. When the tunnel reaches the armory, I'll get my people to start a riot. When you hear the fireworks go off, get your ass to the shuttle bay. We get one shot at this. If we play our cards right, this gets us one step closer to that fortune that went down with the legacy. You report any of this to the guards. Well, you know what'll happen. So, alright, and... Uh, ooh. Carter, Fred K. Staff. Alright, like I was saying earlier, only way there could possibly be this much contraband around is uh, dirty guards. Gotcha. And now I know precisely where to go next. Just, yeah, find any way back over to uh, the central area. We've also got more evidence to hand over to Toft, but don't worry about that. For the time being, yep, yeah, straight back over to the lovely utility room we saw over here. Right, that opens the side room into what is presumably, there we go, one loose panel into a thing, though... Okay, I'm going to be honest, I was trying to get into, like, you know, this room over here. The workroom, though... Right, that might just be tied to master difficulty, possibly. We're not trying to get into the workroom, we're just going straight to, yeah, the armory, though... Okay, I'd say that sounds exciting. To be honest, yes, most of my guns are already advanced. So, uh, just check for trouble. Scan for life forms. Oh, there's something here. There's definitely some bad stuff nearby. Oh, and get Mathis. He's picked up something exciting from the armory. Oh, well, lardy cock and da. So, uh, all right. Don't worry about that. Instead, uh, just to prepare. We know there's trouble on the side of the door. And guys, Guys, I've missed all of them. There we go, I finally cocking shot something. And over you go, over you go too. You're a bit tougher, lardy cocking da. Okay, I like your fancy gun. Your gun's good, that's nice actually. Right, infestation taken care of, just check for anything else. There's one of them floaty lads, but honestly not too much here. Right, by the looks of it, yes, this is where... Oh, watch out the corrosive gas. Right, this is where things started getting real. The proper riot kicked off and whatnot. Corpses of guards and prisoners side by side. Right, looks like we got ourselves another guard room here. So, right, event supervisor's workstation. Just keep on keeping on. No more prisoner birthday celebrations. Okay, well, no wonder they bloody rose up against you. Dear oh flipping dear. 
Okay, I think we've made it back round to, uh, yes, Delgado over there, and Intercom 2, but, um, okay, one other thing worries me a bit more. There's something big under the ice. Right, Delgado, let's have a chat. I hope you found something because I am getting sick and tired of this place. And here we go. We can thank Mattis or toss him under the bus, so... Right, no thanks to this dick. Job is done. I knew it. Everyone said I was out of my mind, but something told me we'd find the answers down here. Looks like I picked the right person for the job. Hey, what the hell? This is bullshit, Delgado. I help plenty. Is that Mathis? Tell him to shut up. I will deal with him later. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Now all we have to do is find the way off of this planet. Um, let me see. Ah, uh, here we go. I'm looking at schematics for the lock. And I don't think there's a way to get you back to the surface from there. But I can open the outer doors to the shuttle bay and let you fly one of the shuttles down there directly up to the key. Ooh, and better and better, hang about. We got ourselves a special crate here. Accuracy on the move, antiseptic is kinda garbage. Combat veteran though, that's good. Yeah, right now I'm a lead-lined and chameleon, same style, but... I mean, combat veteran's pretty good, and sensor chip seems good too for running and gunning with a shotgun, so... Uh, you know what? Sure, why not? Because uh, as nice as this thing is, a chameleon is kind of screwing me over a bit, because uh, it means like, you know, uh, when I crouch down and whatnot, that's not the crouch down button, John, that's the crouch down button. I can't bloody aim with my sniper shotgun. So okay, this might be a good thing in a way. Why the hell did you lie to Delgado about me? You didn't do all this work alone. Okay, not only did I do all the work alone, you are planning to murder Delgado, all right? Oh, come on. There's no need for that. You're right. Maybe I could have done more of the brain work. But hey, at least I helped you take out those things, whatever the hell they were. Right? Look, um, about all that killing Delgado stuff, why don't we just forget about everything that I said? You know, like it never happened. You know what? The thing is, though I don't like this guy, I feel like, you know, the Crimson Fleet are not going to have a huge amount of respect for snitches. So it might possibly be better to not say anything. So, fine, but you owe me a favour. Yeah, yeah, of course, don't worry, I'm good for it. Now, let's get the heck out of here. Okay, Mathis, I suspect we're not done yet, because, um, yes, as I say, there's something big under the ground. Right, mosey on down here, mosey on down in just a second. Suspect. The Queen is about to make her appearance there, there's one a Dead lovely, there's a whole bunch more too. Okay, keep on keeping on her just to make sure we know what's going on here. And there she is, right. So, there's a giant queen. She can also do the whole burrowing thing. It's just okay, the moment she appears. Oh, she can partly repair herself, can't she? When she's like, you know, under the ground. I think she like, you know, gets to regrow her shield or something. So, okay, just move and jump and no. Nope. There we go, there's a good bit of damage. We're doing good crits with you, and you are disappearing fast. Okay, John, maybe consider trying to, you know, get on top of the ship or whatnot, though I don't think you can use the rocks instead. Okay, just loop around the outside here. And I think that's you, dead or very close by to it. I'm so sorry, I just killed your mum. I appreciate that it was rude of me. And job done. Brilliant. So, uh, right. They come in like, you know, queen size on occasion. Right, now let's see if yes, this is about to become my next ship proper. And if it is, do we actually like it? So, okay. Got ourselves like, oh, of course it's going to have a brig, John. It's literally a prison ship. That makes sense. And aside from that, right, straight upstairs to the cockpit. I mean, not bad, but I don't love it either. There you are. The hell took you so long? It's about time. 
I was about to fly down and loot your bodies. Not now, neighbor. Well, you said you found something. Hand it over. Okay, and, uh, right, you don't care about the journals, you just want that slate. Brilliant. That's it? Just one slate? After losing so much of our crew, it better be a map with a big red X on it. Well, I'll be damned. Legacy wasn't referring to Crix's fortune. It's the name of an actual ship. A Galbank transport probably loaded with credits. Never heard any stories about a Galbank ship going down. And even if it had happened, it would have been picked clean years ago. No, neighbor. Think. If Galbank covered it up, and over time, the location was eventually forgotten, it wouldn't be on anyone's radar. Okay. This changes things. Now that we know what we are looking for, we have to narrow the search. Okay. Not 100% convinced that Galbank would just sort of uh, forget about a ship full of money, but fine, sure. Let us start with what we know. It was a Galbank ship, which means the company is going to have records of where it went down. Neva, weren't you working on a deal with Rokov? Something about a... Big wig charity event on one of Trident's Starliners? Are you serious? I've been working on that gig for three months. That's my score. Ay Dios mío. Will you shut up about your score and think for a second? That Starliner has a Galbank VIP suite aboard. Which means... Come on, Neva. This isn't hard. Which means a Galbank exec will be aboard. We grab their credentials and get ourselves into the Galbank archives in New Atlantis. Holy shit, that might actually work. I'll send a message to Rokov right away. Pack your bags, Rook. You're going on vacation. And since you've earned it, take this gun with you. Might come in handy when Rokov screws everything up as usual. My parents are going to be there, aren't they? Like, my parents always show up in nice sort of vacation -y spots. My parents are 100% showing up on this job. I need you to board that ship, make contact with Rokov, and get me those credentials. Okay. What do you want doing with Rokov, given it sounds like you don't necessarily like the lads? You know what? I'm going to leave that entirely up to you. If you think he's come through for us, you can promise him he'll get paid. But if he gets in your way... Then you take him out. Okay, potentially the UC wouldn't like that. Let you know, get the lad paid unless he really screws me over. Oh, before you leave, I wanted you to know that I took what you said about Mathis into consideration. And I've decided to cut him from the fleet. Honestly, I'm surprised he made it off Suvarov in one piece. Yeah, you made the right choice. I can't snitch on him, but you were definitely right. That's it then. Next stop for you is Rokov Starliner, the Siren of the Stars. And remember, Rokov does not need to know anything about Grix's legacy. For now, it's just between us. Now get out of here. Hey, Rook, before you head out, I need to have a word with you. Meet me at the last Nova after you wrap things up with Mathis. Oh, when you say Mathis... Shouldn't you be oh dear. I suspect potentially, yes, he might have uh, words for me under the circumstances. Okay, Mathis, old buddy, old pal, let's me and you have a chat about how we're not going to shoot each other right now. Hey, I want to talk to you. Thanks to you, Delgado's cut me from the fleet. Well, you know what? You better get your own fleet, because I'm coming after you. Oh, mate, you are welcome to cocky tribe. Oh, I will, I can promise you that. Best part is, you won't even see it coming. But you have just told us that you will attempt it. Do you not consider that counterproductive if you mean to ambush us? Now get the hell out of me way! All right, so potentially, yes. Me and Mathis might have, you know, a showdown in future. Got it, keep an eye out for him. Still, I would say we are now very much definitely in with the pirates. So, uh, how about we call it apart there? But next time, uh, oh, we're cracking straight up with this because uh, 
it sounds like we're going to be, yes, doing like, you know, some form of uh, infiltration on a space cruise ship and then using what we get there to rob a bank. So, uh, blimey, that sounds hilarious. And hopefully you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Starfields. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.